Here we are once again. Whoa. Oh god, not again. It's that time of the year again. Always at this time of the year. For the last few days I've been hearing these noises in the sewing room, I don't know what it is and the lights go crazy, so I have a friend who really likes all this ghost stuff and is going, to, well she wants to come and have a look at it. I don't know, I don't mind if she wants to come, I mean, she's free to come. And she asked me to make her a dress so she can somehow fill the sewing room, uh, get soaked in by the, all the feelings and all the emotions in the sewing room. It's going to be a simple dress but with a tulle skirt and long sleeves. And I want to make the sleeves this sort of long medieval sleeve. Let's see how that goes. Simple but quite flamboyant. She always wears black, so everything is black. I have a black cotton for the base of the skirt, black velvet for the top and the sleeves, and then some tulle. You know what color? You guessed it. Black. So let's do it. With the help of our blocks, we're going to transform the sleeve to make it wider and longer and cut it in our fabric of choice. We need an A-line skirt open at the back to insert our zipping. We can sew it right sides together and sew the tulle on top with pleats. The bodice is just a simple bodice we can cut and sew right sides together and add to the skirt. And then we can sew the sleeves in and add the zip. Even though my friend couldn't come today to get her measure, I'm going to cut it following my own measurements because we are quite similar, I think. So the first thing I'm going to do is to cut the skirt, the, the base of the skirt following an A-line because the tool on top is going to be pleated, so I don't want twice the pleats. Uh, so I'm going to measure it from my waist to my ankle and start cutting. I'm going to use my three blocks, bodies, sleeve and skirt that I haven't had the chance to use it. Two things to take into account when cutting your skirt. The measurement, the length, has to be the same in the middle and on the sides. So you have to make a little curve when tracing it. And the other thing is that the back has to be cut in half because we need to put the zipper in. And so the, the back is these two pieces, like this. And then the front where, oh, is this whole piece, like so. So I'm going to sew the two bags together uh, by the center until one point uh, to the hip line. And then sew them right sides together to the front. I had problems sewing, the machine wasn't sewing and it was, I changed the threads, I changed the bobbing, I cleaned it on the inside and it was because uh, the needle wasn't, I don't know what's wrong with that needle, I, I guess I'll throw it away, but it was my last um, chance and it worked. So I'm quite happy with the base of the skirt because I used for the first time my block of uh, measurements and it worked just fine uh, but I'll use it again in, the f in a few weeks because I want to try different things but I'm quite happy with it and now my internet is wearing it because I'm going to add the tool on top I have three meters of tool that I'm going to cut the, the length of the skirt is one meter long 
So I'm going to cut the 3 meters in 3 layers but I'm not going to just add them and sew them together because tool gets um, it, the, the seam will be really noticeable so I'm going to just add it on top and leave it open but I don't want to leave them open on the same side because that will be weird so I'm going to just move them around so the openings are in different positions and then I'm going to add pleats on top there is a weird feeling in here today, I don't know how to explain it. It's Marie Antoinette posing and I'm really liking the result. I have the chills still, I don't know why, but well. I think uh, I've seen some people folding uh, fabric to make pleats even with a fork, which gave you a nice little pleat because they all measured the same. But I did it on the mannequin because it was three different uh, sheets of uh, two. And I didn't know where they were going to overlap and I wanted to have it ready before going to the sewing machine. But that method is also good, I have to try it at some point. As you can see the bits that overlap are loose but because of all the volume you don't realize and I think it's better than to sew it together. If you sew it together you will see the seam so this method I think it's better. And I also hemmed the skirt underneath so it is a bit shorter than the two, so you can see movement when walking. So the next step is the bodice. I have a nice velvet, it's a bit elasticated, so I'm going to sew it with a zigzag stitch, just in case. And because the sleeves I want to make are really dramatic, I want to leave the bodice as simple as possible, so I'm just going to trace it with my block and that's it. Simple thing. The only thing to be careful about when cutting velvet is the way you place your pattern. Sometimes we place our patterns even upside down to make the most of fabrics, but with velvet the fur goes on one direction, so you have to be careful so it doesn't look weird later. This is how it's looking. Of course, it's open on the back because we need to insert the zip. And now what I'm going to do is take everything off of Marie Antoinette and lay it on the table so I can pin it together, the skirt and the bodice, and sew it on the waistline. It's going to be a simple waistline uh, and then you can add a belt or any embellishment you want.
Deixe move or is it me? Here's Marie Antoinette posing with her new dress. Hopefully she'll stay still for a while because that really scared me. And of course the bag is still open and I could have I could have sewn the bodies to the skirt later after sewing the sleeves but I wanted to see how it was going to look. So now with the sleeves. Here I have my sleeve pattern that I did and this dress would be really nice with a normal sleeve or even with a gather sleeve on top on the shoulder with more fabric there but i want to do one with a, a long a sort of medieval sleeve but because the sleeve seam go uh, here on the bottom if you open it you will see it and you don't want that so i have my tissue paper here to trace the sleeve and be able to modify the pattern to transform it there because I want to put the seam behind so this is my sleeve in tissue paper and I marked the grain line because I want to transform it so I'm going to divide this back bit in two, I think in half, I think where the paper was folded is going to be more or less the new cut. I'm going to cut this bit and add it to the front and that way we are moving the seam. And apart from that I'm going to add more paper to make the, all the volume of the sleeve. So this is my sleeve and what I did because I want the hand to be free I, I mark half the, the measurement of my wrist. My wrist measures uh, 16 centimeters so I centered those 8 centimeters on the grain line so that way the hand is free for movement. And this is the final result. I'm quite pleased with them. They look nice. I'm really happy about having tried to modify a pattern and make it a bit more elaborate. It was really good. I'm quite surprised. And for the hem, I didn't do a double hem because this is sort of a light Christ, not like a Mm, premium quality velvet so I just fold it once and zigzag stitch it all around this line the problem about having moved the seam is that we don't have a reference now to 
put it in place but if we figure out the centers we can do it easily I'm quite happy about the zipper. I'm starting to like sewing zips and everything. I had a bit of problems with the hair because it got a bit in the way of the zip when I was sewing it, but in the end it was okay. I managed to sew it properly, so that's good. And then the neckline I did with a zigzag stitch the same as I did the sleeves. It's a stretchy material so I didn't want to, to pull or to fold twice or anything like that. So I just folded once, made a simple hem and zigzag stitch it all around. So now I have to wait for my friend. She just told me she's here and to take the dress to her so she can come in already dressed and to leave her alone so she can do her thing. simple as that she didn't even say goodbye and she left her thing behind well I don't get her I really don't so weird I'm really happy with the dress I made her I think it looks really elegant really nice and I'm really happy about the sleeves of course it looks quite difficult but it's not it's just a simple uh, way of thinking how you could transform a pattern so I'm quite pleased with them and I think the finishing touch it is the belt I think it looks really pretty I, I had it at home around so I think it looks really nice so I hope this has worked I hope you've enjoyed the video thank you for coming with me in this project I hope nothing like this happens to you in your sewing room if you happen to know someone who might like this content, don't forget to share this little chapter of life and don't forget to subscribe either if you're not already. That way you don't miss anything next week. Bye! And what do you usually do around here to scare her? I do this thing, she freaks out, which is turning the lights on and off and I move around all the haberdashery stuff Well now she's going to have a reason to be scared of <laughs>